It is with great pleasure that I introduce our MC today, Dr. Robert Fertrakis, our friend Bob. Bob has been on the ground working the EI movement all over the country. He's spoken all over the country. He was our MC last year. He is also the co-author of the book Strip and Flip, Strip and Flip Election. And uh, talk to him about that book and buy a copy now. These guys work real hard for free. They need a little, they need a little spending change every now and then. So folks, please join me in welcoming our MC today, Bob Fertrakis. All right, uh, thanks to Lucy there. And uh, I realize my uh, key job is uh, to keep things uh, moving here. It's, it's great to see uh, all the election integrity uh, activists. It's sort of a who's who. Uh, I should have brought uh, the books uh, from uh, and the writings of many of the people uh, that we have here, uh, again, uh, Steve Rosenfeld, the co-author from the early days, is here. Very glad uh, to see him. I've written a couple books uh, with him. So, uh, with that in mind, we, we want to make sure we stay on schedule and uh, the people in the audience who often uh, know more than the uh, speakers uh, get a chance uh, to talk. So, uh, I have uh, uh, no real... Uh, prepared remarks uh, uh, other than to uh, uh, point out that uh, uh, thank God for the Russians uh, because <laughs> uh, the great red herring in my mind, uh, yes, they attempted to do uh, various things, but uh, uh, as much as uh, there's concern about the Russians and it's important to take advantage of that, uh, let us begin with the assumption that it is not democratic when you have for-profit, partisan corporations secretly programming your computers at every single level. They're controlling the registration databases, they're controlling the poll books, they're purging people, they're doing the central tabulators, they're doing the firmware, on the machines themselves. They're doing the election night reporting. It is absolutely and totally unacceptable to have partisan, for-profit, uh, proprietary interest involved in a democratic election. So. Uh, and again, uh, while we worry about the Russians, let's go after the people with the keys to the kingdom. That, uh, uh, and again, uh, throughout the day, if you take a look what we're, uh, we're going to do here, uh, we are going to talk about election law. We're also going to talk about exit polls. And again, let us remind ourselves that we don't believe the assertion that the universal laws of physics apply everywhere on Earth except battleground states in the United uh, States of America, and that the exit polls have predictive power for predicting fraudulent elections outside the United States, but the same companies with the same methodology uh, were, were to ignore when they tell us the results are impossible and improbable. So we need to keep uh, that in mind, is that uh, we refuse to accept uh, a system that's non-transparent and that all the red flags are telling us that somebody is tampering uh, with our votes. Uh, so with uh, that in mind, I know it's uh, coming up close to 10.15. Uh, if you look uh, at the uh, uh, schedule uh, with Dr. Emma O'Brien coming in, the question of propaganda and political communication. It's been my uh, thesis and, and many others who have studied this that that which has been done covertly since the Cold War overseas is now done overtly in the United States. That is the tampering, the obvious 
the visible tampering uh, of elections. Uh, just briefly, I, uh, as we wait uh, for the uh, Dr. Uh, Emma Bryant to speak on propaganda and political communication, uh, is we need to change the narrative uh, on this. We need to take a look and say, yes, uh, the Russians may have had some access, but what about these other people? We demand full transparency. Uh, we should stop at nothing short. Uh, and many people in this room, Richard Tam being one of them who worked on this conference, uh, he set up for people in the Bay Area to monitor the computers uh, in Ohio. Uh, and we were connected because before a lot of these strange events happen, uh, the computers go down at the Board of Elections. And when they come back up, you see what appears to be a flip. Instead of a 3% lead, there's a 3% uh, defeat at hand. So uh, we need to realize that those things are unaccepted, and we need flying squads. So what we did in Ohio, you need attorneys, you need legal templates, and you need activists that are used to getting arre uh, arrested. Uh, and you need to be able to rush into those board of elections in those key battleground states. There needs to be coordinated action. And ask them, why is your computer going down? Why is it down? And to make sure uh, that people are willing to observe and take a rest and threaten uh, legal action. Uh, until we get rid of these uh, proprietary uh, companies, and it looks like uh, the CIA, former CIA director James Woolsey, did anybody see he wrote an op-ed? One calling for open source. And two, shockingly, that there needs to be a paper uh, ballot with every machine. Uh, apparently, the great lesson, uh, which I may talk about later in the day, the great lesson we learned from the Jill Stein recount is you can't recount an election in Pennsylvania if 85% of the machines have no paper. This, this has, we've got to escalate our actions. We've got to be able to protest, demonstrate, uh, and take direct action when we know what's about to happen is not a democratic election. Uh, I think, again, taking uh, advantage of the great uh, new red hysteria, we should use that to say, well, you're worried about the Russians. What about the fact the legislature of Pennsylvania won't put paper, a paper trail in the machine, so thus you can't recount it because there's nothing to recount. So we need to be insistent uh, on these.